So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the Bertrand oligopoly with differentiated products. So in our last video, we discussed a Carnot oligopoly with differentiated products. And what we found out there is that uh, in, in the example is that since there were two different demand functions, we would have a uh, separate uh, or two different prices and two different quantities for the, for the firm. And it's uh, stemming from the fact that the firm has the ability to produce a differentiated product, a product that may have a certain brand, a sort of trademark, or a sort of distinguishing quality that may, uh, uh, that may sort of influence the preferences of the consumer to purchase that particular good. Uh, and uh, it's in this differentiation that causes the, the creation of two separate uh, demand curves. So uh, we're going to apply this same logic of having differentiated products with our theory in the Bertrand oligopoly. Now, if you recall from our past video, we know that in the Bertrand oligopoly, firms still act independently. This is still non-collusive oligopoly. And instead of setting output, they set prices. So the main goal is we're going to determine the price reaction function of each firm. And, uh, and their demand is essentially some function of their own price, right? The, what they choose to produce is some function of their own price that they can set and what it thinks that the, the rival firm will set. So we're going to do that example and derive certain things along the way. So let's consider this example. So consider a market with only two firms. So we have a duopoly case and they produce uh, differentiated products that remain closed substitutes, right? So typical case, their direct demand functions are given as for firm one, that's Q1 is equal to 64 minus 4P1 minus 2P2. And for firm two, okay, that's uh, 50 plus P1 minus 5P2. Then firm one's cost is C1 is equal to 5Q1 and firm two's cost is 4Q2. So the goal that we're gonna have first is we need to determine, right, determine the price reaction function of each firm. So how do we get the price reaction function? Well, we use, okay, the FOC for a maximum profit. So we use the FOC of MRI is equal to MCI. And we're gonna do that for both firms, right? So we'll do it for firm one first. So firm one, firm one's uh, demand function is Q1 is equal to 64 minus 4P1 plus 2P2, right? And we can get R1, which is uh, Q1 times P1, right? So that's uh, P1 times 64 minus 4P1 plus 2P2, we get 60. 4p1 minus 4p1 squared plus 2p1 p2, right? And we can get marginal revenue if we take the partial derivative of r1 with respect to p1. And we should get 64 minus 8p1 plus 2p2, right? And that's the marginal revenue. Then uh, you know that the cost function of the firm is 5q1. Therefore, marginal cost is just the derivative of your cost function with respect to Q1, which would be equal to 5, right? And then uh, what, uh, what you're going to notice uh, is that the marginal cost that we have initially here, that marginal cost, is actually uh, not yet the full marginal cost, right? We need to actually get the marginal cost right, get the marginal cost when we are uh, doing this, uh, beca because we know that Q1 is some function of both P1 and P2, we need to try and incorporate that in. So your marginal cost one is actually the partial of C1 with respect to the partial of Q, uh, of P1, sorry, P1, which is equal to the C1, over the Q1, which we know is 5, times the partial of Q1, which is some function of P1 and P2, with respect to, uh, uh, in this case, with respect to P2. 
P1, right? With respect to P1. And uh, what we're going to notice is that we're going to get uh, something that is uh, equal to, so this one will be 5, okay, this derivative is that 5, times uh, negative 4, right, which is equal to, uh, which is going to be equal to uh, negative 20, right, negative 20. Then we can solve for this. Right, we can uh, uh, solve for this. By the way, how we got negative 4, if we just derive this uh, function here with respect to P1, that's negative 4. So that's this negative 4 there. Then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do MR is equal to MR1 is equal to MC1. So that's going to be uh, 64 minus 8P1 plus 2P2 is equal to negative 20, right? then you're going to isolate some things out. So you're going to try to get P1, of course. So this is going to be 8P1. Then this one will be 84 plus 2P2. Then we divide everything by 8, 8, 8. Then we're going to get P1 is equal to 10.5 plus 0.25P2, right? And this is the output reaction, I'm sorry, the price, or, sorry, the price reaction function of firm one. Okay, that's the price reaction function of firm one. So we have firm one now, let's go to firm two. So for firm two, okay, firm two, that's uh, gonna be, so Q2, right, is equal to 50 plus P1 minus 5P2, right? And, uh, to get R2, that's just going to be um, P2 times 50 plus P1 minus 5P2. And this is going to be equal to 50P2 plus uh, 50P1. Uh, that's going to be 50P1. Uh, P okay, uh, wait. Let, let me just uh, uh, scroll over this a bit. Okay, uh... I think I may have made an error in the given, right? So this is minus 5p2 plus p. Okay, so this is correct. Okay, so this is going to be um, 50p2, right? That's correct. Uh, minus uh, there. Okay, so that was the error. Okay, so got it. This is minus, okay, uh, minus uh, uh, 5p2 squared, right? plus uh, P1, P2, right? So that solves that problem. Then we get the marginal revenue when we derive this function with respect to uh, P2, which would be equal to 50 minus 10 P2 plus P1, right? Then again, right, we have uh, cost. We're going to get marginal cost now. So cost is just for Q2, right, therefore the MC in general, that's DC2 over DQ2, this is equal to 4. But again, this is not the marginal cost 2. MC2 is actually the partial of the cost function with respect to P2. And this is DC2 over DQ2 times the partial of Q2, which is some function of P1 and P2 with respect to P2. And you'll notice that this will be, uh, so this is going to be, right, this part here is 4, right? That's 4. Times, uh, if we derive this one with respect to P2, that's negative 5. So we get negative 20. Okay, so that's our expression there. Then we use the first order condition, MR2 is equal to MC2. And this one will yield us, uh, we're, we're going to get 50p2, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, my apologies. That's 50 minus 10p2 plus p1 is equal to negative 20. We're going to isolate this with respect to p2. So this is 10p2, 70 plus p1. I'm going to divide everything by 10, okay, by 10, and I get p2 is equal to 7 plus 0 0.1 P1. And this is the price reaction function 
of firm two. So we have the price reaction function of firm one and firm two. The next question is essentially graphing the two. So we're gonna graph each one of them. Okay, so we have, uh, so uh, if you notice, this first graph here is the PRF of firm one. Okay, that's, uh, that's gonna be equal to um, P1 is equal to 10.5 plus 0 0.25 P2. Then you have here the PRF, okay, of firm two, which is P2. P2 is equal to seven plus 0 0.1 P1, right? And what we're gonna, so that's the drawing, right? And that's just done because it's a linear function. It's easy to derive. But how do we get um, the equilibrium price and the quantity? So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for it using by simultaneously plugging in inside of the price reaction function. So, for example, for P1, okay, so P1, the price reaction function is 10.5, okay, plus 0 0.25 P2. What we do is we plug in the PRF of uh, firm 2 to this to get p1 so that's 10.5 plus 0 0.25 times 7 plus 0 0.1 p1 and if you solve this out you're gonna get p1 is equal to 12.56 right so that's the price that firm one will charge for a unit of its good then what about for p2 well you do the same procedure p2 is just gonna be uh you take its uh, prf so that's 7 plus 0 0.1 but you know that the optimal P1 is 12.56, so just plug it in, 12.56, and you get P2 is equal to 8.26. And that's the price that will be charged by firm 2. So uh, that's what we have um, there. So if you notice, uh, if uh, you have here okay, this equilibrium, and again, this is a price reaction function. Okay, this one here is actually 12.56. This one here, okay, this one here is 8.26. So this represents firm 2's price. So that axis represents firm 2's price. So that's P2. The vertical axis is P2. Then the horizontal axis is firm 1's price. 1's price. Okay, so that's uh, P1. Then uh, how do you get uh, the equilibrium output of each firm? Just plug it back to the demand function. So that's Q1 is equal to 64 minus 4 times P1. So that's 12.56 plus 2 times P2. That's 8.26. And you get Q1 is equal to 30.28. So firm 1 will supply this much in the market. What about for firm 2? Well, we do the same. Plug it into the demand function. 50 minus 5 times, uh, that's going to be P2. So that's 8.26 plus uh, P1, which is 12.56. Then you get Q2 is equal to 21.26. And that will be the amount supplied by the second firm. So that's our uh, short example on uh, uh, Bertrand oligopoly with differentiated products. And in the next video, we're going to discuss, uh, we're going to start our discussions on collusive oligopolies. And uh, I think you'll find the lectures there far more interesting. And it's because it's maybe in most cases more realistic that firms would opt to collaborate and uh, form collusions to be able to control the market in a more sophisticated manner. So I'll see you in the next video.